60 minutes of new music, unsigned bands, unsigned bands. and artist spotlights. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Q104. Three. All right, you're with Jonathan Clark, and joining me live in the studio right now from the Strokes, and maybe I'll call him Rock and Roll Royalty if he's comfortable with it, Albert Hammond Jr. Welcome, man. How you doing, man? Good. So you grew up in L.A. and moved here to go to film school at NYU, I think, pretty yeah. much? Or? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I grew up in Los Angeles, and uh, yeah, you pretty much said it. Yeah, no, <laughs> come college time, I, uh, I uh, got into NYU, and uh, I took a year off. From high school to college, kind of see what the world was about. Right, was like, yeah. You know, I wanted to... Everyone seemed like they had their plans so set out, you know, like they had to do this and go to school to do that, to go to that and get a wife, make money, and I was just like, I really would like to uh, just see what what's out there. Yeah. Local I didn't have a plan know. either, so you're not the only one. Well, the plan is <laughs> to go out there. Just, yeah, yeah. Know, you know? Well, your father, of course, really successful songwriter, producer, and artist in his own right. Um... And I and I, I don't know if this happened to you, but I'm just thinking at some point when you said, "Dad, you know, I kind of like what you want to do," or and, and I want to do that. I really have a passion for it. it. Did he have advice for you at the time, or was he like, "Hey, man, just go for it if that's what you love"? I mean, um, well, I think to like, you know, it's like a when your dad does something, I think people will see it as you know, it's like, well, he does, he's doing, you know this or he does that but really it's just your dad so yeah. to me it was just like my dad and you know when i was young i was just like whatever boring you know <laughs> yeah. ride my bike or hang out with my friends and then i just kind of fell in love with buddy holly uh the man the music <laughs> the yeah. glasses um and uh and then i kind of went to him and he almost like seemed surprised when i said that i really wanted to be i was like wow you can write songs play them sing them you can do that, and I was like, so I was like, wow, I, re- I want to do that, you know. And I got really excited. And I'm talking kind of like in a kid because that, that's what I, I was twelve. So well, yeah. Saying. But um, but and then he was just honest with me, which is probably the best thing he could have been. I didn't even really realize it at the time, but he was just honest, telling me like, you know, you have to work really hard, and if you don't want to, if you don't really want to do this, don't. And I think at every little point, he kind of tried to push me away, you know, not in like a don't do it way, but just like being very honest and i think when you're doing stuff at first it's it can be very hard to hear you know kind of honesty so when you were growing up was it normal for you to be like going to the studio with your father because he had a session to do or something like that or i'm talking about that was just when i was a kid i was like six seven yeah you know by the time i was older i didn't uh i think he'd stopped working really so guitars were always around and and stuff uh pianos we had pianos in the yeah but uh a lot of people who have who yeah. dads don't do music have a piano in the living room, which yeah. is pretty. You know, it's a instrument. Almost like uh, should be. He he didn't share so much with that kind of stuff. You know, right. I think if anything, he shares more now. When I talk to him, I think I became more friends with him now at a later age. It was just more like it was my own thing, and it was like I was discovering it through my friends and through through bands. You know, I met a friend of mine that I knew when I was like five years old. I, I re-met him when I was fifteen or sixteen, basically. I just stole everything that he had from the way he looked to his music, <laughs> and then I did it better. <laughs> right. Well, you have this new solo album out yeah. called Yours to Keep, and uh, brand new songs. Had you written some of these before, before you started recording this? or sort of- uh, Well, yeah, I didn't even start. It's a weird process how it, how it happened. Yeah, I've been writing songs since I was like 15, you know, and uh, then I wrote a song on the record called In Transit, and it just felt better than any other song that I had written. And then Everyone Came a Star and then uh Cartoon Music. Funny enough the album is in order of how it was recorded. Oh yeah. So in I met this sequence yeah, they sequence. say. I yeah. met this uh producer guy and I just I always I always wanted to leave my house but it always sounded better in my house. I always felt producers could never capture what I wanted vocally in certain sounds. And we sat down in his living room, uh kitchen actually. And um, re- recorded cartoon music for superheroes, and it just sounded so good. My friends dug it, so we just started to do more songs. Right. While I was recording Stroke's third record and touring it, you know, so the record <laughs> only took two and a half weeks to record and mix, but over a period of like a year and four months. Um, great song on the new CD called One Hundred One. What I and I want you to talk about that, but also Sean Lennon playing some uh, piano yeah, on yeah. this. Yeah. Well, he came track. in. He came in. 
um, and did a few things on the record. He was able to... I was hanging out with him for a while. We were always talking about music, and I played some of, uh, some songs with him. We right. wrote some songs together, and then randomly, not on this on this record. And then uh, he was just, you know, basically calling up a friend to to go to the movies or calling up to play piano or bass or something. Right, yeah. He was just, you know, you, you always want to involve your friends. And he just came in and played some piano and sang up back and sang back up on one hundred and one. Yeah. Well, his background vocals are great, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. he hits the really, he hits the really yeah. high ones. Yeah. Well, and, and his, uh, you know, we were mentioning this before. His last album is fantastic. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I don't know if he goes out and promotes it much. But yeah, he uh, just came from a huge, from a huge tour. I and, saw him at uh, Urban Plaza actually. Well, tell him uh, when you see him that I love it. I'd love to talk to him about. I will it, drag him here. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> And, and we're back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> here on Q1043 is out of the box. I'm Jonathan Clark, live in the studio with Albert. I, I didn't know this. James E. Ha, Smashing Pumpkins, is your A and R guy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding? That was like it actually even says it on the record. It's always funny to 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 look at it. Um, <laughs> I was a fan of the Pumpkins when I was a kid, and I never, I never thought those two things would ever mix like that. You know what I mean? So right. just to, great guitar player too. Oh, man. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. and it's just fun to see him. He's always. It's just so cool to meet people who. Who like you know who you trust their opinions and like you know who he fell in love with the record and he just the way he comes up to me and talks to me about it is just, it's really nice he doesn't have to he didn't have to say anything he didn't have to sign me he didn't have to do anything and so the fact that he came in was just so excited in his quiet way yeah. it was just uh you know that's it, really when I try to find in, in everyone I work with you well know? yes yeah, so maybe it's better to have an A and R who's actually a musician and could play an instrument and record an album well essentially that's kind of what A and R I mean it's as opposed to a lawyer well, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean like, well everyone has their everyone has their talents you know I feel like to go find music it makes sense that you'd be someone who's been in the business you know I mean right. especially A and R person is kind of like someone who in the end helps you helps you through you know to get to the label that helps you like to talk right. to artists or lawyers and, stuff and like their that. repertoire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Talk about briefly like what records or artists that uh, you listened to growing up that sort of maybe pushed you in the direction that you were going in artistically and songwriting um, wise. Yeah. I'll go. I'll just do it from the 50s until now. Okay. It's the easiest way. So 50s like Buddy Holly, Roy Orbison. Um, in the 60s like the Beatles, Velvet Underground, Doors, Beach Boys. Um, 70s Modern Lovers, Jonathan Richmond, um, Talking Heads, Elvis Costello, Moving Cars. towards the 80s now, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, skip a whole bunch of the 90s, uh, Built a Spill, Got About Voices, Modest yeah. Mouse, now Kings Leon, yeah, yes, Baby Shambles, Arctic Monkeys. And, uh, well, yeah, people have said in some of the... I miss so much, so many Well, yeah, bands. I mean, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> There's a lot of rock and roll history <laughs> yeah, to be filled course. in there, but um, Beach Boys, I hear, actually, yeah. in, the, in this solo CD, yeah. vocally, on yeah. some of the tracks. Cool. I, uh... <laughs> thanks. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna... I would never argue with a compliment. Well, you mentioned Buddy... Take sometimes, but... You mentioned Buddy Holly. He's a bonus track on this CD, yeah. actually. Yeah. Well, all right, you covered yeah. that. That must have been fun. Oh, man, it was great. We actually... The bonus tracks are with the the album was one through ten, and then we did. Uh, I really wanted to do in England. They put I still put out singles, so I wanted to do. Uh, do they really? Yeah. yeah I What's a single? Do, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so like you know, like the, I wanted to do two new songs on the single. It just seemed exciting, um, and so we went in for a day and just recorded. You know, a God of My Voices song, plus a Blowfish and that Buddy Holly song, and then the American version was like, well. you they're not going to be able to hear those ever, so I might as well 